Hey everybody out there in the land of YouTube, so in case you haven't read the title of this, this is going to be a completely spoiler filled review. So in this review I'm going to be covering mechanics of the Chucky doll, we're going to be covering the misleading aspects of the trailers, we're going to be covering the kills, and various other things. So if you don't want to know about spoilers, get the hell off the video right now because I'm going to be completely ruining this movie from top to bottom. I know there's so many people out there who have actually enjoyed this film. Now, I can see where they're coming from, but I just, honestly, I need to get all of this stuff off my chest, and yeah, uh, let's, let's begin. Chucky, I'm scared. <laughs> So first off, let's talk about the story. The story is, is that Nika is living with her mother at the introduction of the film. A package is delivered to their house anonymously. They don't know who it's from, they don't know where it's from. All they know is, is that when they get it, there is a Chucky doll inside and I'll talk about later on as to where it came from, but let's just try and follow the story in chronological order and the errors in chronological order. If I can, then that'd be great. Basically, after they open the package, they start to have some very unwelcoming things occur throughout the house. The mother dies at the start of the film. We know that it's Chucky, we're not that stupid. So straight after this event, the rest of the family starts to come along. Now to correct myself from my actual review, by the way, if you haven't seen my actual review of the Curse of Chucky film, I advise you to check that out first. I'll put a link right here for you to check that out. We're talking about whether or not they're actually going to sell the place or whatever. The little girl who is the vessel for Chucky later on in the film is actually Nika's niece, played by Summer, whatever the hell her name is. Also to join the party is Nika's sister, whatever the hell that girl's name is, I'll... Honestly, I can't remember. I don't really give a shit. I just want to get all of this stuff out in the open. For some miraculous reason, I slept for like 14 hours today. I don't know what the hell happened. I fell asleep, woke up five minutes later, or oh, I felt like it was five minutes later. Anyway, it's not the point. Let's get back to the review. We have Nika's niece, Nika's sister, Nika's brother-in-law, and Nika's sister's housemaid. First off, let's talk about the mechanics of the Chucky doll. I personally hated the mechanics of the Chucky doll. Not to full effect, I have to clear myself there, it's not to full effect, they are very good. I just don't believe that 100% of the time it was a Chucky doll, like a, ro a robotic Chucky doll, I just don't believe it. Even the director of the film, he's trying to say that it's all mechanics. Now anybody who knows mechanics well and knows visual effects very well will understand where I'm coming from when it comes to them using the Chucky doll at 100% of the film. Nevertheless, even if it was a robot, they just aren't anywhere near as good as even from Bride of Chucky. The mouth movements are horrible, absolutely horrible. They've gone back to the mechanics of how the Chucky doll would have worked from the first movie. Now, we loved the first Chucky movie and the mechanics of the doll because of the fact that it was the 80s. It was the 1980s when the first film came out, and everyone was like, whoa, this is like a revolutionary piece of technology that's scaring the shit out of people because it's a robot. We get it. We understand that. If you want to reinvent the Chucky doll for the, the modern day, and make it a darker version of the Chucky series, especially when you're trying to make it better than Seed of Chucky, make it exponentially better. But no, they made the mechanics of the doll worse than the recent movie and even worse than the third movie which was made in 1991 hey long time no see pal no oh, you're dead we killed you you know what they say you just can't keep a good guy down andy how you've grown you're not gonna kill me you need me you need to transfer your soul into my body. Wrong again, wimp. 
I got some fresh meat lined up and I'm not gonna let you spoil it, not this time. So we've got a movie that has technology that's more than 12, 13 years old. And what is my computer doing? I don't know, my computer's chucking a spaz. Anyway, I don't know what happened, but it's almost as if they used a completely different, it's like they upgraded the Chucky doll halfway through the movie to try and make up for the lack of intrigue and the lack of everything really from the first half of the movie. Now that's not to say that the story is boring, because it's not boring. The main character, Nika, she's a paraplegic, and so because of that we're kind of almost instantly interested in what she has to show, what she has to say, and what she has to deliver in her part as a main character. Because we haven't seen a paraplegic played as a main character, I don't think, like, ever. And if we have, she, that person hasn't been a main character. Nika seriously resents the fact that everybody tries to help her out in the way of she can't do everything on her own because she's a paraplegic. This isn't the case. She shows this a number of times that she is self-sufficient. She can take care of herself. The gore factor. The gore factor in this movie is good, but once again, the gore factor completely is ruined by the fact that it's just, it's not anywhere near as good as even Child's Play 2. 2. <laughs> It's interesting in some parts to, to see them try and make it like the first Chucky movie, but it's not. This is a sequel to either Bride of Chucky or it's a sequel to Seed of Chucky, and so therefore we don't need a huge suspense builder. We just don't. We, un we know who Chucky is, we know what he's capable of. We've seen suspense-driven movies from the previous ones, like in the first and second one. We've seen that already. So we don't need that once again. The, the goriest part of the whole movie isn't even a kill by Chucky. Well, it was. He played a part in the kill, but it, he didn't indirectly kill him. He gets decapitated. Not by Chucky. Chucky poisons his food at the dinner table with rat poison. Now, that would have been cool if he had of, like, dropped dead or something at the dinner table, or at least on his way out, or in the car, in the car park outside the house, that would have made it a little bit more suspenseful because it would have been a mystery to the family as to what happened to him and they would have at least acknowledged the fact of his death. They didn't, they didn't even let you know that the family knew about him dying. It's almost as if they just, they tried to suck you in into, into seeing, okay, we need to push this forward. We need to give the audience some gore and let them know that we're not gonna take the low road and be like, okay, there is no gore in this movie, no, we're just gonna chuck in something there for, like, the sake of chucking it in there, and be like, okay, so how can we kill off the priest? No one likes a priest because we're watching a horror movie. Most people who watch horror movies are like, okay, fuck God, all this different stuff. Now, I'm not gonna get into the topic of religion because I don't, I don't disapprove, but I'm completely in the middle, so... Don't give me any shit about religion or anything like that. I don't mean any offense. I purely am just saying this from what they say in the movie. That's all. There is no God. One of the other things that I'd like to point out straight off the bat is the Chucky's choice of a vessel is a little girl. Now, honestly, can you see Chucky being happy with the fact that he has, I mean, I know, beside the fact that he's got a young person's body again, just shove that aside. He wants to go into a girl's body. Now, later on in the movie, he, he makes it very clear that that person is the least likely person that anyone's ever going to suspect. Now, we understand that, we get that, but it's just not the same Chucky that we've known since forever. It doesn't mesh up correctly, as I said in my regular review. It just doesn't mesh. We'll just say, for argument's sake, it's been 10 plus years. Why do we need to see another suspense builder? I don't know. You tell me. 
A lot of people seem to like the fact that it was a darker version in comparison to Seed of Chucky. We needed to see something new and something fresh. I love the fact that they tried to take this movie in a dark direction. It was a, a huge positive with this movie. It was, it was a brilliant idea, but they didn't execute it properly to its full effect. The lesbian relationship that even I didn't see coming with the, the housemaid and Nika's sister, whatever the hell her name was. I didn't see that coming. It was a bit of a shock to me, yes. But having little things like that did not impress me. It, they didn't need to be in there. It just didn't. We... It's not a soap movie. It's not a movie where we're reliant on drama and mistrust and all this different stuff. It was like, okay, that's cool and everything, but we don't need to see that. It's move on. Just move along to something new, something different. For a lot of the people that don't know, during the making of Curse of Chucky, they were actually making another Chucky movie. They were making a second one, or not even a second one, they're making a remake of the first Chucky movie. Thank God! The only reason I say thank God is because of the fact that this movie tried to carry on the story. I would have been more interested in this movie if they tried to reinvent the story from the very beginning or if they tried to make it a darker version of the original story to what we know already. That would have been cool. But because it's a continuation of a story that pretty much flopped on its ass for number four and five, we don't need to see a continuation and a totally jumbled mess of a story... Uh, okay, I'm just gonna out straight tell you. They add some aspects of the origin of the first Chucky movie. Huh, here we go. Now, so the night that Charles Lee Ray was shot, he was apparently having an obsession with Nika's mother. Charles Lee Ray killed Nika's father. He was a friend of their family. There was, you know, some cool little video footage, you know, showing him there, you know, trying to make him look young by making the screen all black and white. That was cool, but the minute that they started saying that he had kidnapped this woman, this pregnant woman, he's holding her hostage in this basement. It's pregnant to Nika. He's become obsessed with her so badly that he bl brings her flowers every day, you know, and he's very, he's just out flat creepy. Like, I get that that's the direction that they were trying to go with, but like I said in my actual review, it's not the Charles Array that we know, it's... Uh, I have no motivation to talk about this topic because it's just not cool, it just wasn't that... Uh, pissed me off, pissed me off a lot. Nika's mother is the cause of the police chasing him to the toy store in the first place. She called the police on him, when Charles Lee Ray finds out that Nika's mother had told the police that he was there and she was in trouble and all this different stuff, he taught her a lesson by stabbing her in the stomach. Yes, that's right, he stabbed her in the pregnant stomach. But you don't see it, it's implied. We know that a lot of people don't like seeing pregnant people get stabbed, but everybody seems to love it in The Red Wedding on the Game of Thrones, so why not in this movie too? It just... Like I said, if they're going to make an, a, you know, an, an update to the Chucky movie and make it, you know, make us all get gobsmacked by things that just will shock us, out flat shock us, then go ahead and shock us. Give us something new. Give us something... Well, not new. Just give us something that's going to make our jaws drop. Give us something like that. So, yeah. Basically, he severed the nerve. Which, uh... Yeah. Made her a paraplegic since birth. So, now you know. That's when he gets shot. In the, uh, in the toy store. In the beginning of the first movie. So, yeah. Pretty much, it all started out... The biggest reason why he's all pissed off is because... He has an obsession with this family and he's trying to figure out a way to get back to the family so he can get revenge on them. That's pretty much what it's all about. This movie's about revenge. It's a revenge plot. Not cool.
Like we, we get that it's, it has some coolness to it, just not enough. It's not interesting, man. Move on. If they are trying to change the origin, or at least add some things from the origin of the first Chucky movie, to try and slot that in, in the remake of the Chucky franchise, then I can understand that. But it's, it's not really a good way to do that, because if you're going to be remaking the Chucky series, and then you put in the changes of the Chucky movies from the previous one that you indirectly made, for those of you who don't know, Don Mancini, the creator of the Chucky, of Chucky, the, the Charles Play series, made this movie too. Now that's cool and everything, but like I said, he needed to bring something new to the table. He needed to like punch us in the face and be like, yeah, I've still got it. And he did that for some bits of the movie, but it wasn't enough for me to pull it past a 6 out of 10. It wasn't enough to, you know, really push me forward and go, whoa, I did not see that coming. A lot of people are like, why didn't this come to cinemas? I can understand why this didn't come to cinemas. For starters, let's talk about the trailer. The, the misconceptions in the trailer. The things that are going to like totally push you away from this movie. The things they don't tell you about that they should have told you about in the beginning. Now, I get that you know it would have been a huge spoiler if they did tell you in the trailer, but it would have convinced a lot more people to be like, shit, this isn't a remake, this isn't a reinvention. This is a continuation from Bride of Chucky, or a continuation from a story that wasn't so stupid and far-fetched and downright not funny at all that we might actually be interested in this film. Now, a lot of people who actually saw this movie or are going to see this movie are like, okay, I'm going to see this movie because I love the Chucky movies, and that's why I saw it. I saw it because of the fact that I love the Chucky movies. Everybody was talking about how Chucky's face looked too CGI. Chucky's face looked very animated. Chucky's face was very glowy and all that different stuff. The misleading aspect of the trailer is when Nika's sister is putting her hands near Chucky's face. That's when people were like, what? Pretty much, this is what it looks like in the movie in that scene. And this is what he looks like in the trailer. They basically just tried to not make the trailer have spoiler content, really. That's pretty much it. The garage scene. There is something that really, really pissed me off about seeing Chucky behind the wheel of a car. It was the fact that we know we have a brain that says that Chucky's not tall enough to have his head and his shoulders above the wheel of the car and still be able to put his foot flat down on the pedal to create the exhaust smoke to fill up the garage. We know that. So why were people impressed by scenes like that? Okay, let me just try and contain myself because there's just too many things. The brother-in-law. He clearly saw the Chucky doll before the stitches were revealed. So why was it that when the brother-in-law came into the garage, did he not go, wait a second, maybe Chucky is the killer, he's got this weird looking face going on right now. Why did that, how did that happen? I, I'm not going to question it. I'm going to blame my new sister-in-law. I'm going to do that instead. I'm just going to pin it completely on her. Not because of the fact that it's completely far-fetched that a doll could potentially kill people, no, I'm going to throw out every irrational th thought in my mind and I'm going to blame a paraplegic. I get why they would say that, you know, she could be the killer. You know, anybody who w had a rational s mindset would pretty much go straight toward her as the killer in real life. But, okay, I don't even need to explain myself. People should know by now that, you know, little things about this movie just... There's too many minor things in this movie that just take away from the whole thing altogether. Uh, in the end, they pretty much declare her as crazy. They put her in a mental institution. And the reason why she doesn't give a shit is because of the fact that Chucky didn't kill her. As the same as, you know, she 
Chucky and Nika talk about how he didn't he never actually killed Andy Barkley, which brings me to the Easter egg at the end of the movie, at the end of the credits, after the credits, whatever it is you want to say. Andy Barkley gets a package uh, delivered by Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer Tilly, give the game up. You're not as young and hot as you used to be, especially like in Brother Chucky. You look like you got a double chin. I'm sorry. It just, it's not the same. It took away from it. It's like it was a poorly, a poorly conceived idea at the last minute to try and add that little bit in there and, you know, give a bit of nostalgia for the fans. And I understand that, you know, people who liked Bride of Chucky, they would have been like, okay, cool. They just brought back someone from Bride of Chucky. Sweet. But she killed the police officer in the exact same way as she did in Bride of Chucky. Which just brings me to the same thing as I said before. New ideas, man. New ideas. She could have, like, flirted with him or something. Did, like, her old subtle techniques to, you know, get the Chucky doll or whatever. She could have, like, made the guy notice that she is who she is and freaked everybody out and freaked the police officer out, whatever. She could have, they could have done a lot better than what they just did. And instead she goes, they'll never learn. Yeah. That's what she said. They'll never learn. So straight after that, this is about a two minute long Easter egg, which was really cool. I thought that the Easter egg at the end of the movie was the best part of the movie. Why? Because Andy Barkley does show up. I got this package. I'm going to set it down on the table. He gets a phone call from his mother, or he calls his mother, I can't remember. Chucky, you know, uses a knife to get out of the of the box so that he can surprise Andy and they have you know all the photos memorabilia from the first sets of movies that Andy Barkley the original Andy Barkley from the first and second movie he's all grown up now the minute that Chucky gets out of the box Andy Barkley is not stupid he, he, he reacted in the smartest way possible Chucky turns around and he's got a shotgun barrel to his face Andy Barkley returns the line of play with this and blows his head off with a shotgun round cool <laughs> bravo to that really good easter egg i loved it all in all there are so many there's so many points about this movie that just i didn't like that i'm just going to leave it at that because if i talk about it anymore people are just going to completely strangle me to death so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the review. Check out some other links that I've got around the screen. And until next time, peace! So, who's next?